Hello again, I'm Mark. Welcome back to Three Bridges. So for this episode, I'm going to try and show you a couple of bridges that I'm making. So rather than the normal sort of smaller road bridges that you have, these are two large road bridges that are based on real road bridges in London. Um, so this is the first one. So this is the Rossmoor Road, which is actually coming away from Marylebone. So right at the end of the platform, so there's a huge bridge that crosses Right, I'll put up some images as I sort of talk through this. So, uh, the road was probably built at the time that the station was built. So it's a, a, a huge um, width. So there's the pavements at the side. When you actually do the, um, you can measure from one side of the other to the, using sort of Google Earth and it's, what was it? It was 19 yards wide, which is about 17 and a half meters wide. So it has very wide pavements. So then there's quite a narrow uh, area for parking cars. Obviously, built, probably built at the time when there weren't many cars all around. Um, and the bridge itself is also, I'm going to show you uh, to get the height of it. So there's an image showing you the DMU going underneath and the clearance is very, very narrow. Um, so Marylebone is the only station now in London that isn't got any sort of electrification into it. It's still very much diesels. Um, there is no plan, I don't think, to electrify Marylebone line in. There's probably, it's probably been talked about a lot. So London's a strange place. It has... 13 uh, terminus mainline stations. It has more mainline stations than any other city in the world. And we're at the moment supposed to be getting two more if HS2 ever gets built. Um, so taking up to 15. If you include all the ones that are no longer um, in operation, there's over 20 mainline stations went into London at one point or the other. Anyway, so this is Marylebone. This is my first railway journey up. And this is going to be the first of the big bridges. So how do I, so having used Google Earth, I've got some dimensions. Um, obviously you've got a roof strut going through here, which is where you've got that cut out. I'll try and hide that with the bus a bit. So I make up a base platform, which is two bits of card. And then I've got a few, just got the cross struts. And it just gives it a bit of stability in itself. If I hold this out with one hand, it's quite rigid. It will, um, it won't flex or anything. So. So that's the base, and that's the same as the base I've got for the other bridge. And then I mark up where I'm basically going to have the pavement section, so I'll cut out some thinner car like that in the, the pavement paper. And I'll do the road with, I'll just use the scale scenes tarmac for this one. I have tried other road surfaces, but I do find the bridges are just easier to use. As soon as you can wrap this in uh, the pavement structure. And then for the sides, I've made up a sort of small template section here. So um, I'll show you up an image as well. So it's a bit tricky. I have to go back to the old sort of 70s and 80s DMU images. And I'll put a couple of those up on the screen to see what the structure of the bridge was like then. Because today it's wrapped in sort of sheets of... Uh, metal when they improved the station they also improved the bridge by basically just wrapping the old uh, cast iron structure in um, steel polymeric finish um, and, so, and it's just a basically quite a bland grey um, there's also an image I'll put up on the screen now uh, clearly from the 70s there's a little graffiti on about uh, more housing needed and I the important of, of the picture is it gives me a person. So I suspect they're probably about five foot five. Um, so I worked on the principle if I'm six foot, she can't see over the the parapet. I just imagine I would probably have to stand on tiptoes to try and see over. So that's given me a height at the side. And then from the other image, I've worked out that the, it's about a third, two thirds. Well, it was a couple of days later after a hot weekend. So I finished off doing the, the road paper. Um, the pavement papers are made up and they're just set aside at the moment. 
So what I've done at the, um, the edges is I've added a capping, which is quite wide. Um, got one along the bottom. And then also I've put on the side another layer so that you have this sort of girder step down that shows it. Okay, and then as you can see, I've started to put the staples. I'm starting to put the staples, so you basically stir this straighten out the staples and I'm just super gluing them so they're quite deep. I don't worry about the super glue, so I basically put a thin bead and then drop the staples onto it. I don't worry about them being perfectly straight, you don't need to because when you view it you won't notice those if they're not correct and obviously when I repaint it up as well it also blend in and then the same for the inner ones so again these are just two staples wide and these are put on flat There's a couple where the staples are longer than the gap, so you just bend it over a little bit. And what I find is again, when you paint it up, the extra super glue, it will just look like rust and corrosion that's forming at the side of the, this was the girder iron. So I've done a, a sort of very dark grey wash at the finish. Now I'm going to sort of weather it up a bit. Okay, so the last thing I've done, I did like a blue wash almost on the staples. I just, I don't want them to, I wanted them to sort of pop out a bit with the light, reflection of the light. So rather than paint them black, they sort of in a very really dark blue. And then I've just gone over the middle panels uh, with a bit of white weathering powder. As I noticed on the, uh, the marrowbone, Images you could see that the middle of the panels were quite faded as opposed to the edges. So I'll um I just need to sort out some legs now and then we'll pop it up on the platform. And obviously I've got the uh the pavement in. And that's the other side.